This is a digital video number two of the three tower Duplo 10,000 S collator with DC48 stacker and uh, Lonnie and Tony were running the five and a half by eight and a half a sheet. Uh, this is a minimum size for this machine. Uh, as I mentioned to Tony, you know, for uh, expediency in, in production, you would be a lot better off to um, be a lot better off to run this uh, like on eight and a half by eleven or eleven by seventeen, four up instead of one up. Uh, mostly because. Mostly because of the situation where you're running so much more production. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is that uh, anytime you operate or you run in the minimum uh, areas of a machine's capability, you're going to run into problems. Uh, or anytime you operate in the maximum of a machine's capability, as you guys well know, you're in the machinery and you know that, it, that anytime you're pushing the maximum or the minimum is always issues. Part of the problem here is that because it jogs pretty good, and you can see it separating them like you want them separated. It just won't jog them quite as neatly because this backstop will only move so far, it won't move any further. And also keep in mind that it only takes an hour to cut up a million sheets of paper, but it takes, you know, a, a couple of weeks to collate a million sheets. So, you know, just by recommendation, uh, even if you had already had this machine, I would, you know, recommend that you um, consider running it on a larger sheet. Uh, also, like when you're changing over, every time you change over from a large sheet to a small sheet, no matter whose machine you buy, you have a lot of setup. Those side patterns that you see on each side, they have to be removed and replaced with smaller ones. Then this side guide has to be pulled out all the way. Then this guide here, the side guide, has to be moved over. Then you have to change over to different side guides like these instead of the standard side guides because those are the side guides when you're running a small seat. Um, so there are a lot of changes that have to be made, and uh, and also when um, when you're running a small sheet like this, you have to uh, you have to cut off. You may not you may be able to get away with it. Like I'm only running one tower on this test run. You may be able to get away with not turning the valves off, but these machines have sucker feet that uh, pick up the sheet. So when you're when you're feeding a large sheet all the way out like this, like the one, like this sheet here, the large sheet that you guys collate, you need you need these two sucker feet out here turned off. But when you're running this narrow sheet, you don't. So you know you've got 30 sucker feet that may have to be turned off. Right now I'm not turning them off. Sometimes you can get away with it, but it depends on how many bins you're going to use. Because where the valves are turned off. Whoops. We just had a uh, we just had a sheet kind of in there a little sideways. But anyway, you know, we, we make we make our best suggestion based, you know, on our years of experience with these machines, you know, we, we're, we've been at this a long, long time. And what we find, it's always best to wrap the job around the machine than to wrap the machine around the job. Now I know, I know that sometimes we have to do, we have to do the latter, wrap the machine around the job, but if it can be avoided, it's always going to come out better. You're always going to get more production, better quality, less problems, less issues with employees that get frustrated over machines that give them a hard time. Anyway, I'm clearing this. Yeah, all that happens, see, some of the 
some of the paper that we got, I, uh, I guess I, I thought I filtered through it, but you see that buckled sheet? And uh, that's one thing that that you have to be careful about. But, I mean, it ran, you can see, it ran the stack, and it's stagger stacked for you. You know, staggered over, about like I said, about the same as the other job. So, realistically, ideally for the top production on the collating end, it would be better to have both jobs, both the large sheet and the small sheet, small job, all run on the same size sheet. Then there'd be no make ready time, no changeover, better performance, because typically the your larger sheet has more body. One thing you want to remember that a small sheet like this has very little body to it. You know, it doesn't have much traction. And the way the rollers are set up on all of these collators, not just this one, but every collator out there has basically the same system. If you bought a brand new Duplo, you'd have the same basic system of rollers. You can see the distance between the rollers, okay? The distance between this roller and that roller is almost the same as your sheet. If you look at it, you can see how when the sheet leaves this roller, it's just barely grabbed by that one, see? And that's where one of the problems comes in, is the distance between the rollers, like back here, and then when the sheet comes out of here, you see how far how far the roller, how far the sheet has to travel. So what happens is when you're running at high speed, uh, it, this is why this is set at the minimum. This is at the absolute minimum. Then it comes out of here and goes into this set of rollers. So anyway, uh, my recommendation is that if you buy this machine, um, that you run the larger sheet, at least run this sheet two up, like two side by side. That would give you an eight and a half by 11 sheet, which would make it a lot less make ready and issues. You're gonna run a little bit better because now you have the extra added body of a larger sheet and the traction of a larger seat. And that's my recommendation. Now I'm not, you know, everybody wants to, everybody does their own thing out there in, in, in the graphics world and, and uh, the machine, according to the specifications, this is the minimum sheet, uh, five and a half by eight and a half um, for, the, for the receding stacker, okay? So that's my recommendation. Uh, I don't see a problem with feeding five and a half by eight and a half. I don't have enough paper again to really run all the bins because I've used most of the paper and all I loaded was 10 bins of the small stock. But you know, mo more than likely it'll be okay. We'll try to see if we can split it out a little bit and put some of the paper in the rear. But anyway, uh, you've got my recommendation. Uh, let me know what you decide. And uh, just remember what I said that it always, you know, it, it always pays dividends in production and, and profit when you are able to uh, modify the, the manufactured product to fit the machine you're buying. Uh, if you want a machine that's best suited for running this job the way you're saying, I would go with the new 1060. Uh, the new 1060 Duplo, uh, they've redesigned the feeding system and redesigned the stacking system to handle the smaller sheets uh, more, a little bit better. and and it, the change over time is much faster. Um, so that would be a good alternative, but you're looking at you know significantly more somewhere in the 40s, 45 to 50 thousand dollars for the newer for the newer model 1060, three tower with a receding stacker. So let me know what you guys think. Be happy to discuss it with you uh, over the phone and go over different uh, alternatives. And uh, thank you very much for your interest in our equipment. We appreciate it very much. Have a good day.